um, they'd buy these coins in advance, then post it on the social media and be like, buy, 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 this is the next big thing. But in a sense, they want to get rich. They want to dump the bags on you guys. Those were like my biggest drivers telling me, do better for yourself. So that's opened my eyes to learning about more, even though they wasn't very accepting to start with when I told them I was getting into blockchain and crypto because they was a bit skeptical. I'm going on the internet seeing that this Nigerian guy has walked home with 10 million. Are you Satoshi? Well, I'm Satoshi. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? If this video gets 2,500 likes, I will give away some Bitcoin to five of you. Damn. I made some decent money and moved to a third world country during the boom of crypto in 2021. Then I got scammed. I made some very bad trades. And now I can't even afford to book a flight <laughs> back home. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Hello, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Make You On Destiny podcast, the podcast that empowers you to shape your future. Today, we're diving deep into a topic that currently is a trend. A lot of people want to get into it. A lot of people are getting rich by it. A lot of people are getting broke by it. A lot of people are going bankrupt. A lot of people are stealing money from their parents just to get into this. What's this topic? The topic today is crypto. Now... Before I continue or before I give the, the floor to the main man who's joined here today, Tarek, let my co-host give you a little bit of some funny, funny, funny stuff. I'm so excited. As I said, it's a very hot topic. And you know, in the last 10 years, like crypto has been by far the best investment ever. Do you know, like, if you invested $1,000 into Bitcoin 10 years ago, how much would you have right now? 29 million dollars bro yeah it's crazy so yeah we are joined with a very special guest today Tariq and he's gonna tell us a lot of stuff personally I really want to know who Satoshi is I hope Tariq is gonna tell us because after he launched Bitcoin he disappeared from the internet people are making a lot of money with crypto as I said if you invested a thousand dollars you would have 29 million dollars and also people are losing a lot of money so you can also have a thousand dollars today and wake up tomorrow with ten dollars it's possible so yeah let's dive in today's topic and also like this video subscribe if you want to know who satoshi is Tarek, how are you doing bro i'm doing very well thank you how are you i'm fine i'm fine and monty how are you doing today i'm chilling bro so who's nice satoshi to... well i'm satoshi <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking right <laughs> Um, Satoshi is the founder of Bitcoin, so he was the one that created the Bitcoin white paper in a sense. And Bitcoin is the first um, payment solution to ever come to crypto. So that's why everyone talks about Bitcoin. That's the biggest, that's the most popular, and that's what everyone knows. Do any of us here hold Bitcoin? Yeah, definitely. Most definitely do you? hold Bitcoin. Yeah, I do hold some Bitcoins. If you guys need any Bitcoin, get this video to 10,000 likes and Mr. Satoshi here. Do you know what? If this video gets 2,500 likes, I will give away some Bitcoin to five of you. Damn. Guys, please like, like. I'm going to take all my accounts and just like this video so I can personally get the Bitcoin. <laughs> but <laughs> what do you think, Musa? Yeah. But yeah, you it. but yeah, this video isn't just about Bitcoin This or crypto. This is about the whole blockchain industry in a sense. So blockchain is what I've gained interest in in the past few years. So if you don't know, my journey started around 2019. Um, I just stumbled across um, crypto and blockchain um, while browsing through social media. And it was crazy because a few months after, I sort of created like a business model where I was essentially selling Bitcoin to people and adding a little markup fee and gaining a little um, cash on the side. And that went on for a while until I stumbled across an issue which made me want to pursue blockchain further. So what happened was um, the banks restricted me. That opened my eyes to decentralization as traditional finance is sort of complicated. So let me give a, a, a quick example. Ben and Jerry. Ben wants to send a thousand pounds to Jerry through um, transfer, bank transfer, right? So he sends it and Jerry says that he doesn't receive it. He calls the bank and they will tell you that they'll give you an answer in two days. 
but Ben sends one Ethereum to Jerry. Um, Jerry says he doesn't receive it. Ben goes on Etherscan.io and he sees that his transaction is there and the money has arrived in Jerry's wallet. Jerry's been caught out as a liar because he said he doesn't receive it. That's sort of why I got into um, crypto and blockchain because the transparency is just so different. Like everything is in your eyes, everything is just there for you to have a look at. Uh, yeah, you know, most people confuse when it comes to crypto and blockchain. So, can you please explain like what is crypto and what is blockchain? What are the differences between the two? To be honest, there isn't much big of a difference between crypto and blockchain. So, crypto is a segment of blockchain. So, blockchain is such a whole massive ecosystem of tech, if it's coins, and it's just a massive ecosystem that you can't really Id identify in a sense. Okay. So, right early. Like blockchain is like the internet and crypto is like running on the blockchain. It's like it's essentially that's what it is. Okay. okay it's, that's cool. it's a little segment of the blockchain. So you said you started this 2019, right? Yeah, around 2019. I mean, so you're still in high school, if, I'm, if that makes sense. So how did that go about? I mean, how did you get involved? I mean, surely people that age, girls, cars, whatever, whatever, movies, just go out. How, what took you out of that and just say, let me just learn go deep into crypto space well i can say that i've always been open-minded from a very very young age so i did like all of that to start with then i realized that's not really going to get you where you want to be in the future so um i had very good friends around me my parents so those were like my biggest drivers telling me do better for yourself so that's opened my eyes to learning about more even though they wasn't very accepting to start with when i told them i was getting into blockchain and crypto because it was a bit skeptical i'm going on the internet seeing that this nigerian guy has walked home with 10 million yeah with crypto um it was proper hard until um i started explaining the whole tech to them so um around 2021 there was these um company called strong block right and what they had was that they were running nodes and these nodes are generating you money like every every single day. So I got in a very early price. I think it was fifty dollars. So what you had to do to have a node was hold ten strong. Ten strong is the equivalent of a thousand dollars at the time when I got in. The coin mooned to about a thousand two hundred dollars. So every week you just gain a payout of about a thousand dollars. And it went on for weeks, weeks, weeks. And when I explained the tech behind that to my parents, they sort of, sort of understood it. And I was like, keep it going, in a sense. And that's where I got the opportunity to just keep it going. So, how? I mean, I get where we're from, from Africa and everything. Our parents are kind of old school and stuff. How did that go about explaining it to them? And how, was it easy? I mean, okay, cool. You're, you're talking about that easy process. But was it, how was it behind it? So... One, the Ben and Jerry example really helped, right? But it took me about three, four times to actually um, say it to them and just break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down. And one day they just understood it, I guess. Yeah, even though I think that they don't really care like about what's actually going on because it's so hard to understand, right? But they believe in me and not um, crypto in a sense. There's a notion that crypto is a scam a lot of people say that probably they've been scammed somewhere due to lack of proper information or due to lack of research what do you think about that notion well it's a very common misconception i must say right um the people that suggest that are probably people that have come in with the idea that you're going to make money off this tomorrow right that's not going to happen right you could get that, that lucky but it's that 0.1 percent lucky that luck that you'll get if if you do invest right crypto is not a get rich quick scene at all you've got to know the tech behind it you've got to do your research find out who the team is um ha actually have passion about these projects right and sufficient due diligence looking behind what they're building is their idea does it make sense like does it look like it has long longevity and if you do believe that then invest Personally, I thought um, it was a get rich quick um, scheme, or whatever. There was this coin that blew up. What was it Elon Musk was promoting it? What was it? Dogecoin. Dogecoin, guys. Yeah. Let me tell you guys about Dogecoin. I remember, shout out to my friend, man, Ray. 
Ray came to me and was like, Monty, when I get rich, let's just do this. <laughs> do you know how much I invested? You know how much I was expected? Yeah, I put down $50, $50 thinking I'm going to get 50000 the next day. Like I'm like, bro, why is this not going up? Like, this is like, I don't know, four years ago, three years ago. Very volatile coin. I was like, bro, why is this not going up? Till today, my money's in that flag right now. It's like 0. 0.00 something. Now, to be honest, if you invested in that four years ago, you probably have made decent game. Right? I don't even know what app I invested in. That's how bad it is. <laughs> Mis- what's it? Misinformation. Yeah. I just did it f- thinking tomorrow I'm going to go buy a Lambo. Yeah. So, like, from experience, I see a lot of people just um, on social media. Most of the coins market on social media are meme coins, right? These are coins that um, people want to artificially pump to um, pump their own bags. So, like... They, there might be an influencer. You know about these influencers, right? Um, they'd buy these coins in advance, then post it on the social media and be like, buy, buy, buy. This is the next big thing. But in a sense, they want to get rich. They want to dump the bags on you guys. True. Do you think, I mean, from your personal views, do you think that's unethical? Very unethical. Very unethical. And that's very illegal in a sense. So uh, most of these people doing these, um, get um, pumping these coins have been arrested some of them some of them are still free just to understand that i mean okay cool end of the day whoever's buying crypto wants to get rich right i mean whatever you're doing you want to get somewhere in the future right so why am i gonna get arrested for pumping something for my personal gain and the day the game's the game the game is the game but it's sort of very unethical um you're insider trading in a sense and you know how insider trading is very illegal one thing about crypto is you can get rich very fast and you can lose money very fast. So it's a two-way game. That's why we forgot to tell this, like, this is not financial advice, right? So it's a good investment, but it's not financial advice. So if anyone wants to invest in crypto, you are advised, like, to do your own research or you should just contact your financial advisor, like, go to your financial advisor and pay him and let him advise you on what to invest on. But if you want to learn, just go and lend it by yourself. Yeah, this is just for educational purpose only. It is his journey. Nothing to do if you guys are going to invest or not investing. We're not doing that here. As Musa said, contact your financial advisor. We're not your financial advisor. We're doing this for you guys to learn and understand Tarek's journey. So what other misconceptions are there in the crypto space? Um, the other misconceptions is that the only thing that um, crypto is for is for payment solutions, right? So sending money from peer to peer, but no, um, crypto is massive and blockchain is massive as well. So there's cryptos out there offering you um, holidays. So you can book crypto um, um, holidays with crypto. There was this coin I stumbled across um, at the start of my journey called Ava Traveller. And it um, they have a native token called Ava. And with that token, you can travel the world, right? You can book a flight from here to Malaysia. And like, as the coin goes up, um, the value goes up with the coin. So um, the higher it went at, um, back in the day, um, you, you'd essentially get discounted flights. So if the coin was worth, I don't know, what was it, 10 cents, 20 cents, if it went up to 40, your flight would essentially be half of the price you thought you, you bought it for when you invested in. How deep does the crypto space go? I mean, as you just said, peer to peer, some people right now may be thinking... So many narratives. So there's infrastructure, blockchain infrastructure. There's gamified. You can build games. Um, what else? There's, there is a lot. Like, phew, everlasting like wealth and narratives in, 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 a, in a space. You know, what I really want to know, because I have personally lost a lot of money in crypto. Even Monty has lost money, although it's just $50, you know. It's peanuts. But then... For people who doesn't know and want to get into crypto, how do they do their own research? Because we just told them that you have to do your research. So how does the research process go about? So one, the biggest tip I'd give you is to get on crypto Twitter, right? Because there's so much um, alpha on there. Alpha is sort of just good information, right? Um, There's so many profiles of um, that give really good alpha. Um, keep you updated with the latest trends. Um, they be posting price updates if, if it's to do with Bitcoin, Ethereum, with um, even micro cap coins, even the meme coins, right? Um, the second way is keeping up with news. So um, my best friend has a, a, a news publication 
um, every day they'd be tweeting about um, um, the current updates. So we have snapshots where we'd be posting what's what's going on throughout the day. There's other um, new sites like Coindesk. If you heard of Coindesk, there's Cointelegraph, um, CoinGecko. So it's, it's literally just getting yourself hooked onto these platforms and just staying on them every single day. But another way, um, so if you're investing, I cannot stress about looking at the team. So have they got experience? Like where were they working before? So most, like from what I've seen, most crypto projects now have been hiring executives from Google, if it's Meta, Facebook, if all these big firms, banks like JP Morgan, Deutsche Bank, they, um, they all be hiring because like one, I think these guys really believe in what um, decentralization is. If they're moving from, from traditional finance to decentralization, surely they believe that this has some, some sort of potential, right? Um, also, I'm looking at tokenomics, how these projects are spending their money. You don't want to get into a project and you find out that the founder is taking himself to Miami every other week, right? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> very true. I mean, you know, you said something about passion. Yeah. It's just the way he talks, you can just tell how passionate he's about crypto. I mean, personally, I genuinely, maybe, you know, something. sometimes you don't have to, don't have to follow passion, sometimes you have to follow where trend is going, it could get you somewhere. But the way you talk about things is how you guys don't get into things just because someone tells you. Do your due diligence, do your research before you get into something. Don't try to start a podcast before you don't watch any already podcast because you, you you get what I'm trying to say, innit? <laughs> but point is, the way he talks, Musa, don't you feel the passion? So be passionate about something and do something, find your passion. It'll get somewhere you're trying to go. But damn. I suggest that if you don't get into crypto, if you really haven't got a passion for it, if you feel like your future sort of revolves around blockchain, then get into it. But if it's you want to make a profit, I suggest you wait till the bull run because the markets ain't looking very good at, at this given time. So when Bitcoin's halves, I think 2024, um, the Bitcoin's half in the supply. Um, I think that the markets will sort of kick back around then. We see some early stage projects starting to launch. So some projects that I've invested in have um, been saying that they will be launching very soon, which is a big plus. Some of these projects I invested in two years ago and I haven't seen money from them yet. And for them saying that they're launching gives a good indication that other projects will launch. So you said the way that you got into crypto is because you had problems with the bank, right? So, why do you think banks hate crypto? I don't really think banks hate crypto. I've, um, what I've seen now is a lot of banks starting to integrate a lot of crypto. Because if you're, if, essentially, if you can't beat them, join them, right? Yeah. And what's next up is blockchain. Because of its scalability, transparency, and I think the banks are starting to realise that. And if you can't beat them, essentially join them. You know, the crypto world is very fast paced and you're still a student in the UK, right? So how do you balance studying and dealing with crypto? All right. So it's just about focus in a sense, right? Focus is very important. And that's what I realized. You can't juggle a lot of things at the same time if you're not focused. And um, what I sort of done is create myself a routine. So most of my time is actually dedicated to um, learning. Um, at university and I prioritize a little bit of time to actually learning about crypto so I'd say 30 40 percent of my time is allocated to that and a bit of that is allocated to other business it's literally about literally focus 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 um I've faced um problems with um so sort of um balancing my social life because there's there's so much to deal with um, if you're juggling crypto um, and blockchain and being in school is very hard. So I've limited my social life a little bit. Um, but yeah. Let's say right now, yeah, I want to go to my dad and tell him I want to study. No, not study, but like, I want to do this hard work. I want to get into crypto and everything. Obviously, he's an African parent. What are the tips of going about it? Maybe, obviously, you've done it, so... How should I do it? Honestly, ben and Jerry. <laughs> honestly, Ben and Jerry technique. 
if that doesn't work, then no chance. <laughs> but yeah, to be honest, you just have to explain the tech to them, right? Um, if they sort of just understand a little bit of it, so if you can compare traditional finance to um, decentralization, then maybe they'd, they'd sort of understand. But really don't talk about how you're going to buy a coin and expect it to moon. Literally talk about what the project does, what the team does, who, who works for it, and maybe you have a little chance. So do you feel like when we become parents, obviously, do you feel like it's going to be a different whole world where, oh, dad, I want to get to crypto? Yeah, oh, so... Yeah, so as years go by, um, I'm seeing hints of actual regulation for crypto. At the moment, it's got limited regulation in a few countries, but with more regulation, the more people start trusting projects, the more governments will start trusting these projects, um, the more banks we see integrate. So I do see a massive future for blockchain in the whole. What's your guys' prediction time frame? For what, in a sense? For what? Crypto takes over the world. 10 to 15 years? 10 to 15 years, I'd say. It's crazy, you know, whenever a new technology comes up, a lot of people fail to understand it. For example, right now, I myself, I face a lot of difficulties when I try to explain the internet to my grandma. Whenever I try to show her YouTube or Spotify, anything on the internet, she's always like asking questions. She doesn't understand it. So yeah, any, anything that's new, it's very difficult to understand it. And people are always skeptical about it. Not just crypto. Exactly. And that's why I've given it a 10 to 15 year time frame. Like, if we were all a younger generation, I'd probably say 5 to 10 years. But a lot of people aren't really going to understand what's going on until they see mainstream, right? So I'd expect crypto to officially go mainstream in quite a while. So 10 to 15 years, maybe. Crazy, man. Obviously, right now you're on vacation in Tanzania. And you're going to go back to the UK. And obviously, you jumped into the crypto space where you're, while you're in the UK. So do you feel like to, being in that certain location of being in the UK influenced you to jump to the crypto space rather than if you're in Tanzania, would have been different? Good question. Um, I don't really think it had a massive influence, to be honest, because I got connected to crypto through social media. Social media is everywhere. You can access social media here. So it didn't really play a big part, but it definitely played a part in me actually connecting with, with some people. So I met my um, partner in uh, in the space in, in England. So if I didn't meet him, then I don't think I'd be in the space I am. Mm. So um, a lot of conferences, big conferences, networking events go on in England as well. They've sort of paid a little contribution, but these conferences are everywhere. So there's some in Africa, Kenya specifically, which is very close to us. So these... Um, things are so so very available to us and we just have to take the step to actually push ourselves to actually start learning about them. Uh, Musa, you've been in Tanzania longer than us. You've obviously been in the, in the game as well. So what what's your thoughts on this question? Do you feel like being in Tanzania is a bit different and influential to come to the crypto space rather than being abroad? Uh, as Tarek said, if you're in Tanzania, you are not limited. You can always learn about crypto through social media, as he said, and social media is available everywhere. But I think one problem that you can face is the regulations, because right now, here in Tanzania, there are no proper regulations that to use crypto. I remember even the other day, it was the governor of the Central Bank of Tanzania, he said publicly that they don't recognize crypto transactions. And I even remember the president, he once was giving out the speech and he told them like, you guys have to find professionals to go and research more about this crypto because it's a very new thing. So a lot of people don't even understand it. But I think in the future, after the adoption is massive, they're going to create the rules on how to proper use the crypto system. I feel like, as you said, that social media connects us everywhere. I feel like our ego doesn't push us to learn new stuff. For example, people who are not subscribed, generally if someone could be watching it, but just because we're saying something valuable is the reason why they don't want to subscribe. If that makes sense, like just want to do the opposite. But that's why I personally feel like that's why people abroad kind of like, as you said, you're open-minded. I don't feel like us, 
when on that stage, I feel like we're very close minded. Especially if we hear someone on, let's say, for example, if I saw someone walk on the streets, give me something that's very valuable information. Just because maybe they don't have enough more money than me, I might be like, what they're saying is crap. That makes sense. But someone who doesn't have money could be saying more information, valuable information that could make you more richer. But then we're just not taking it in because of the ego that we have inside. So I feel like that's why our country is kind of like still behind. We're very egotistic. We don't have got anywhere. But I feel like once we start becoming open-minded, everything will be different. Even things, things can be, be adopted, adopted easily. easily. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Um, so what I've also realised since getting into this space is that now that I'm in this space, I just be open to speaking to anyone. So if I'm at a networking event, I want to push myself to know what this guy's doing. Just in case I know that we can share um, certain synergies. He could, he could provide benefit to me as much as I can provide to him. Because you never know um, these doors that could be unlocked. And that's what I sort of realised. If you speak to someone, they could be an investor. They could be an angel investor, seed investor. And these guys could be funding your next projects. And yeah. So jumping on the about whole unlocking doors thing, how do you or how do you measure like Musa is a person who's going to open your doors or you're going to cut them off? Like how how do you measure that? If this guy's gonna be on the good side or let me just cut them off, they're talking nonsense. So yeah, you'd actually just have to see what they're doing. And if it sort of links back to um, your like initial idea, then you can sort of hold a meeting with them. And through there, you can sort of explain what he has to offer, what I have to offer. And if the synergies connect, then um, you can start building ideas together. And if they could provide some, some sort of value to me, I'd sort of maybe bring them on my team um, maybe form a partnership um, if he has a project that needs raising I might be an investor if like if a pitch is good enough so there's people right now behind cameras, cameras that are probably in, in, into crypto, crypto space. space yeah so if, if someone connects, connects with you yeah. how should they go about it so I I'm sorry I didn't say this before um, I also have a venture capital firm which um, actively invests into um, blockchain startups since 2021 we have facilitated over seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars in deals um and the way people will be connecting with me is through my telegram on at the moment my telegram is very bombarded so initially people will be sending me um a messages pictures and um, with their pitch decks telling me why i should invest and that's sort of how i've connected with a lot of project founders and through telegram i've also connected with other vcs other angel investors and how I've sort of built my network in a sense. So um, what's your telegram? <laughs> is that something private? No, um, it's it's not private, but um, we could link it to the um, All right. <laughs> description. If you guys want to connect with Tarek, we're going to link his telegram on the chat below. Yeah. But please, don't send some stupid stuff. <laughs> you guys were sent by MYOD, so please represent MYOD community and go talk some sense yeah. and connect with them. You never know, maybe you can invest into your... Whatever you want to, whatever you're doing. Yeah, to be honest, um, we are still actively investing in blockchain startups. So if you've got a project that aligns with what I've just said, if it's a, a gaming project, if it's an infrastructure project, if it's what I said like Ava, where, where you can travel with coins, um, just hit me up. And if I don't invest, I could connect you to um, uh, my network. So my networks are actively investing more than me. You know, a lot of people are very skeptical about crypto, but they don't realize that there are some countries that have passed their law and they are using some cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin as a medium of exchange or like a mode of payment. And there are also some countries that have banned Bitcoin, like China. So let's talk about Tanzania. What do you think is the future of cryptocurrencies here in Tanzania? That all just depends on the regulation. So if, if we really wanted to battle inflation here, um, there's a project I invested in very early. So this is the first um, micro cap coin I bought. So um, what, the first small coin I bought, it's called um, RSR, Reserve Rights. And essentially what they do is that um, they're like a currency, right? They are in Venezuela and um, I can't disclose where they'd be moving to next, but in Venezuela, what they do is that their native coin is used as payment solution. So you could go um, like into the shop, 
buy um, anything bred with RSR and it battles inflation because um, the inflation in Venezuela right now is insane. Like, if you don't know about South America, the notes are worth nothing, right? And it's provided a lot of benefit to the um, consumers there, um, a lot of benefit to the government, and it's just unlocking new doors for consumers in a sense. So for us, if we could integrate a sort of um, coin that maybe poses some competition to the T shilling, right? Okay. We could probably see a big future. Okay. So let's go back to the whole investment, the whole VC part. Yeah. What investment have you made? And you were like, wow. I've learned a lot from this investment. Like, was it an L? Was it a W? Oh, good question. Um, the first investment I made, um, tiny, tiny amount, fifty pounds, and it was an early round um, of this project called Star Atlas. Right, we got into the seed cell. Um, what I learned is that putting that much money in, right, fifty pounds in, and it doing a four hundred x, right, four hundred plus x. If I put any bit more than that, I would have retired in about 20 years, right? So, it's crazy. <laughs> so it's all about due diligence, right? Yeah, so it's all about due diligence because actually getting into the deal that, that deal itself was very hard. So I didn't initially get it myself, but I got it from a partner of mine, like a very close friend of mine who sort of believed in what I was doing and he let me put a small ticket in which we are very happy with. Another lesson I've learned is um, always do your due diligence, right? Um, I wasn't going to speak about this, but um, I lost access to my second wallet and it had a pretty decent amount of money in there. Um, what I did was I had my seed phrase written on paper and I lost it. Um, I don't think it's safe to have it on your phone or your laptop because it just poses a risk from hackers, right? So another um, lesson I learned is probably write it in four different places or maybe five and just stash them in underground or whatever it is. It's true. Well, so what about you? How do you keep your stuff hidden away so that hackers don't hack your stuff? Okay, in the crypto space, there's something called a seed phrase. Like... That's what gives you access to your crypto assets that are in a wallet. So that's why you are advised always to keep that seed phrase a secret. So it's just like a key to your safe. But Tariq lost it. It means he forgot it. I don't know where he wrote it, but you're not advised to put it online or anywhere. You're just advised to either memorize it or put on a piece of paper. So most people lose just because they forget that Seed phrase. If I have my seed phrase, I give you that just that seed phrase. It means I've given you access to my wallet. That means you can take everything that's inside the wallet. And if you and if you forget about it, it means all your assets are lost, like forever. You will never be able to recover them again. So, for people who want to get into crypto space, they should be aware of that. It's a very important thing. And that since the um, what you said, the seed phrase literally is for um, any wallet in a sense. But um, I suggest if you're getting into crypto, you get a cold storage wallet. So this holds your coins and your keys offline. And that's the safest way to navigate crypto and hold your crypto. Because if your money is on exchanges, you don't hold the keys, right? These, um, these keys are hold, um, held by the owner of the exchange. If it's Binance, Binance hold the keys. KuCoin. Um, another very, very cool story, not cool, but very sad story, is that there was this exchange called KuCoin. Have you heard of KuCoin? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, um, I sort of uh, moved money onto my KuCoin account, right? Um, and I bought some tokens called Naka. Um, Naka is, uh, was a gaming project that done very well in like, 2021. Now, these coins just disappeared once. And that lesson I learned was that if they're not your keys, they're not your coins, right? So that was when I realized I need to buy a cold storage wallet and hold my keys and my coins offline. Fair enough. So you guys, I hope you guys are taking notes. As usual, I usually remind you guys because I don't want you guys to be missing out on the 
key parts. But moving on, um, so you said your friend has a publishing website. He publishes articles and stuff, right? So is that the only way you get you stay informed of the trends, or what other way do you navigate trends so you can stay ahead of the market? Um, before actually opening my VC firm, I used to do a bit of futures trading. So I used to look at the trends on um, um, TradingView. So there I'd open up a Bitcoin chart if it's an Ethereum chart and I'd um, be able to um, use a technical analysis to analyze where Bitcoin would probably go in the next week. Or if it's a bigger time scale, um, where would I see it being in the next few months? And even that sort of helps because that gives you an indicator of where um, um, the other small cap coins will go. So if Bitcoin does well, other coins will do well. If Bitcoin does shit, other coins will do shit. And it's actually just learning them them little little secrets, ideas or tips that will actually bolster your um, like initial knowledge. So how do you? I mean, you're in the game, right? So this has been in the game for longer than me. I think. <laughs> how do you stay ahead of the trend? You need to be updated with the news always. So you need to follow like all the crypto blogs. You need to be checking the prices, let's say on CoinMarketCap or on CoinGecko. And you should always learn as anything, you know, the game like always changes. There are new cryptos coming into the market every other day. So you should be updated with the financial news all the time so that you can stay updated. So banning cryptos does not stop the innovation that's going on into crypto world because people are working on it every single day. So what are the most exciting innovations so far that you have seen in the crypto space? As controversial as it may sound, but um, play to earn games. So I never would have thought that um, crypto projects will pay you to play games. And um, this was, um, I think play to earn started around 2021 when idea came about. And there was a lot of projects that were offering play to earn. So like I mentioned, uh, my tokens Naka got um, it disappeared, right? Anaka itself is a play to earn game. And they've done very well because they had a lot of users. And these users were playing games on there and making sort of passive income. Um, when the bear market hit, um, the, the token sort of dumped. So um, the, um, the amount of money you'd make wasn't that much. But that innovation itself, play to earn, I feel like that sort of bolstered the bull market. People making money from just playing games, which is insane. Another innovation is um, a lot of these projects, crypto projects, have been integrating AI. So one innovation integrating another innovation is just going to be just uh, good for everybody. So It's crazy because right now people are even using crypto to bet. You know, there are betting sites that are strictly crypto. You cannot bet with yeah. no more money. So that's another innovation that I've also seen. Yeah, to, to be honest, they've, they've been getting very popular and um, some of them that I've seen are actually growing bigger than act, um, tr traditional betting sites. So um, some like Rollbit I've seen have been generating so much revenue. Like if you compare them to, I don't know, Skybet, um, they're literally almost the same. The question that we always ask our guests is whatever they're dealing with, whatever industry they're in, I have to ask them. But for you, how do you think you're making your own destiny for your involvement in the cryptocurrency? Uh, by generally pursuing something I have an interest in. So if I'm doing that, I feel like I'm making my own destiny because I feel like I've built something that um, I could be very proud of. I've um, connected with people that will take me to places where I never imagined um, coming into this place in the first place. Um, I've built this network of people that will um, sort of invest in anything that I I bring forward to them because they trust my word, they trust my due diligence. So I'm very proud to sort of have made my own destiny in a sense by building what I've built so far. So you mentioned something very specific, saying you know, it's something you have, very, you have an interest in. Do you feel like you can only make your own destiny something that you have a passion? No, you can make your own destiny with anything. So you could wake up tomorrow and have a totally bizarre idea you wouldn't have thought of yesterday and put so much work and time into it and build something out of it. 
and literally make your own destiny by that. You you can make your own destiny by. Um, I'm actually waffling at this point. Now it has to be cut out. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Keep you know, rolling. Don't you know, worry, I'm not gonna cut out. You don't need. I think you don't need to be passionate about something. I saw again. I was it was total. Okay. I think you don't have to be very passionate about something to make your own destiny in it, because I don't think the richest guy in Africa, Ariko Dangote, is so passionate about cement. <laughs> and I don't think he sleeps. You know. <laughs> thinking about Siemens. Yeah, I think about Siemens. Oh, wanking, you know, with the pictures of, of Siemens. So, yeah. But the main thing that you should have, you should have discipline. You should always be disciplined on something that you're doing. That's what will get you far and that's what will enable you to make your own destiny. Well, guys, that was Tarek. But before we end this episode today, Musa has something to share for you guys to have a laugh a little bit. <laughs> Musa, what you got for them? Oh, oh, oh fine. <laughs> so Musa, what is it? What exactly today are you going to share? Because this is, I think it's a very rare thing. I've, I've actually seen these a lot um, over the internet and they've just been cracking me up all the time. <laughs> Some of them are very, very funny. Uh, yeah, so I have some confessions here about the crypto market that some of you will learn, some of you will be aware of them before you start. So here the first. I stole $5,000 from my dad and bought Pepe at the top. He didn't know it was me and called the police. That was the first one. Second one is... Uh, I sold my car to go all in on a coin at the start of 2022. Oh. Now I walk to work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's funny, huh? <laughs> and I made some decent money and moved to a third world country during the boom of crypto in 2021. Then I got scammed. I made some very bad trades. And now I can't even afford to book a flight <laughs> back home. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Imagine doing that, bro. It just shows you that you should do your research and know what you're actually getting yourself I'm into. Lying. Because it's crazy, isn't it? It's very, very crazy. And very quickly you can lose your money. Like, mm. It can disappear just like that. Yeah, some, some woman said, I sold all my crypto during the 2021 May crash. Not because of panic, but I had to pay for my son's surgery. The best decision I've ever made. <laughs> even though he's dead now. <laughs> I, did not, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Do you know what? She probably made the best decision of her, of her life. Because well, I feel like if he died, it would have been, she would have shown him to live for herself. No, but at least... Oh, no, that's bad. I was... Why, why did you laugh? It was <laughs> <laughs> <Too> unexpected. <laughs> Very unexpected, that was, bro. I'm sorry. Well, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. It's just... No, these, these confessions are very, <laughs> very explicit. Yeah. Becoming a crypto guy gave me a yellow fever. I believe the two are correlated. Yeah. I started buying Bitcoin at... Six and nine thousand dollars oh, until no. today. I buy every month. I have never been in profit. Oh, no. I live in a very small apartment. I sold everything I own, and I sleep on an inflatable mattress. It's hard. I often wonder if it's the right thing to do. Wait, I'm confused though. If he bought at sixty nine hundred. He bought at the top, so he bought oh. at the top of Bitcoin. Oh, sixty nine thousand. Sixty nine thousand. Yeah. I thought six nine hundred. No. That's crazy. What are you doing, Tom? Huh? Even Monty would have made that decision. Yeah, that's a reminder that you should not invest on any investment when it's at the peak or at the top. You should always wait for a discount. Like, you cannot just go and buy real estate when the price are booming or when the price are at all-time high. Because, you know, whatever goes up, 
must come down. Yeah. yeah, so we should always wait for those discount prices to get in. For sure. Yeah, man. I hope you guys enjoyed a bit of confession of something new that we never do before. Before you end the episode, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to our channel. Before you go, what you got to say for them, Tarek? Just a little last word. Just remember that if this video gets 2,500 likes, I'll be giving away some Bitcoin to five of you. So make sure that happens. Guys, make sure, guys. Please. I'm not going to disclose the amount. It could be massive. It could be nothing. But make sure you guys subscribe, like, comment, all of that. I'm very happy that these guys have got me on here. This is my first time publicly speaking. This is not really my thing. But I feel like it's the time for you guys to start to know more about this ever-growing industry and what it holds and what it could provide for us in the future. Because I believe decentralized finance doesn't stop here. Like, we've got a lot, long way to go. And hopefully with regulation, um, more backing, more adoption, we will get... We appreciate, we appreciate you giving us some free game. That was yeah. a free game, man. Not everyone comes here and just gives some free game. <laughs> and, and by the way, who is Satoshi? I am Satoshi, by the way. I create a white paper. Your guy, you heard it here. He is Satoshi. <laughs> and it's a wrap. <laughs>